What if you don't like physics? Can it be learned? Is it an acquired taste? And my answer to that is absolutely. Um, when I was first starting my freshman physics class, uh, many years, multiple years ago, um, and I went into that freshman physics class, I did not really care for physics. And over the course of two years, uh, as I finished freshman physics, intro physics, all the classical stuff, I went from being okay to physics uh, and, you know, liking it a little bit to absolutely despising it. And when I was done with the two years of classes that I took, it was, it was, um, it was four terms total of physics classes, I despised the subject. I was like, this is horrible. Who, who would like this? Um, and, and I didn't see the fun in it anymore. You know, there's a point, I think, when you don't know enough about physics that you say, oh yeah, black holes are neat. Uh, relativity is neat. Time dilation, I don't, I don't know how to describe it, but yeah, it's neat. Physics is neat. But how do you take the ideas of physics, the things that are neat, and then when you see things like, you know, the magnetic fields, they're really pretty. And then you see the equations and how to calculate them. And you, you look at something like a Biot-Savart law, or in this case, let's, let's go back to some of the equations here. Some of the algebra, it's, it's just nasty. And so how do you find fun in this? I think everybody understands that physics is cool. And to get to a point where this is cool does not come overnight. And if you're feeling discouraged about physics because you're in a class and you know, you, you've always wanted to do this, you've always wanted to do physics, do not give up hope because the homework problem that you're on, you know, number 50 out of 100 that you've done this term feels bad because not all of it's fun. Sometimes when you go out to exercise, you go out to run and, you know, everything hurts, right? And it is hard to continue. But if you push through, it becomes fun again. And so in this video, I want to talk about what happens when you don't like physics. Because I don't think any normal, sane person goes into a book like this and enjoys it. I don't, I don't think that if you were brand new to physics and never touched like anything outside of like a pre-calc class, going into a book like this is going to confuse you. It's going to make you feel inadequate. Um, and there's a lot of psychology that goes on here. If I don't understand a problem because I don't understand the math, then I can't even have fun enjoying the physical problem that's being set up because I'm too busy looking. Okay, where did, what, what, what did they do with that derivative? Where did they carry that? That's not fun. Nobody wants to be confused. And what's worse is when you're confused and the topics are new, then learning is almost impossible, especially in a formal classroom setting. If you don't have all of the experience you need to have and you're super up to date on all the algebra you need to know and you brushed up on your calculus and your line integrals, then physics might not be fun because you don't feel adequate. You look around and everybody's answering it and now you just feel like the stupid one. And, you know, as someone who... I'd like to think isn't uh, maybe too sharp. A, I think I'm, I, I have some level of intellect behind me. I have felt like the stupid one in so many classes over and over and over again. And the answer is not that you're stupid. It's just that, you know, your level is here and the class might be here. And whenever there's that disconnect, that negative disconnect downwards, you're going to not enjoy the class. It's going to be hard. And if you're someone who looks outward and, and has a tendency to judge yourself based on others, then you're gonna feel really bad. And without realizing it, that brings a whole, like your whole perception of physics as a whole goes down because it, it becomes this punishing thing and not something that's fun. Uh, because the truth of the matter is, physics is fun when you're good at it. When you have the confidence to say, oh, that's interesting, and then you work out a problem in like a textbook, and then your answer is right and that happens five, six, seven times over, you start feeling confident about physics. You start feeling good about it. And that's why on this channel I've advocated to start with really easy physics textbooks that you can ace and then move into the harder stuff. Make it easy for yourself to succeed. Because with that, the mindset of enjoying physics, it elevates you and you become someone who feels confident in their ability. Um, and usually you don't go overconfident because very quickly you can open up a bigger book and get humbled. And I, I, I get humbled all the time with half the books in my library. Um, but that's part of the fun. It's like once you know you're confident enough to reach that first initial hump, the hurdle of physics, uh, then it gets easier. And so if you're struggling and you feel like physics sucks and it's hard and it's tedious math, then lower the hurdle. Don't go straight for a book like, you know, the, the, the specifics of general relativity or black hole physics. Like avoid that and start with something like um, this university textbook. And if this is too much, because I don't blame you, it was too much for me when I first started my freshman year of college, find something even at a lower level and learn the concepts of what are happening. That will make you happier and you will enjoy physics. Uh, but what I wanna talk about today is what if all of the textbooks aren't good? What if you're at a point where 
Uh, even something like the most basic high school textbook just makes your eyes glaze over. What, what do you do then? And my recommendation to you is to try something different. Um, most of us here are nerds on this channel, which means we usually don't read much fiction, or at least um, I certainly don't. And I watch the occasional documentary. And one thing that I started doing uh, when I first tried to start enjoying physics again was reading books kind of related to physics. And so this is a physics adjacent book. Uh, this is by a physicist named Fred Allen Wolf. And it's ta taking the quantum leap. It's, it's the new physics for non-scientists. And you can see, and it basically describes the breakdown of Newton's laws and, and how things kind of started with relativity, how they moved into um, principles of uncertainty. And, and finally, how we get into kind of like the modern physics of things faster than a speeding photon. It's all, it's all language. It's all plain English language. And this particular physicist, Fred Allen Wolf, is an absolute wordsmith. The man talks about just about everything in this textbook. And I've learned so much just about culture from reading it. Um, there's something called the bicameral breakdown, which is a theory in history. And I don't know how true it is, but he goes into all this detail about it. And it's a book about, about physics. And you're like, what, what on earth am I doing learning like Victorian history in this book? But it's there. And it relates things that are already interesting back to physics. And it, it gives you this picture again, this curiosity to physics that you're like, wow, that, how does that work? And here, here are the table of contents if you want to see. I got this book um, at, at a Goodwill, like I do a lot of my books, because it was a fantastic deal. I think I paid like four or five bucks for it. Um, but you talk about things like the passive observer, Zeno's paradoxes, how we talked about continuity and how the ancient Greeks thought about it. And it's all brought back to this central idea of what did the physicists at the time think about this? So this is a fantastic book to get your mind in the right sort of state to enjoy learning about physics again. Because the truth is, it is an acquired taste. It will not come to you overnight. And I, there was a period in my time, a period in my life where I absolutely hated physics. And it went from my favorite subject to my least favorite subject, to where I would dread going to class. And if that's you right now, that's not permanent. That's not something that is because you're not smart enough. It's not something that's because the, the class is too hard. It may be right in that moment, but you, you could do the work to catch up. I promise you, you can. But what it truly comes down to is setting yourself up to be in the right mental state to absorb the physics. And if you aren't ready for a given set of equations or a, a given like level of difficulty in a class, that's okay. But know that and know that it's not because of you. Um, one of the greatest quotes I ever heard was when I was first learning physics, and um, I forget who said it, but a gentleman, he told me, he said, if you're smart enough to enjoy the ideas of physics, if you're smart enough to realize that you like physics, then you are every bit smart enough to learn it. And I've held that true um, so far, and it's, it's just proven to be right time and time again. So if you're in that position right now, I just want you to know that there is hope, and it gets way cooler, so stick with it, because there's so much beauty to explore in physics. There's so much knowledge about this world that we're lived in that just feels downright magical at times. And I recommend taking a step back from it if you need to. Read something new that's like adjacent to it and, and see if that ignites your passion again. Because sometimes what it takes is to put some distance between the nasty parts and embrace the beauty of it again before you dive back in. You know, get out of the pool, dry off, and then take your dive. Take it in moderation. I believe in you. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.